show you some of the things that have helped me be successful. So uh, a couple things that I do, I'm a, I'm a hairdresser. I own salons. I have a, a website platform that's an educational platform. Uh, we have a salon over on West 3rd uh, called Spoke and Wheel, W-E-A-L. I think you guys in your packets have uh, complimentary services. So if you want to come in and get a haircut from one of my team members, we, we do that as a service to you guys. Um, also, I do a lot of editorial work. I work with a lot of designers. Uh, Oscar De La Renta, uh, Betsy Johnson, Carolina Herrera. I've shot for pretty much every major publication and I've worked with pretty much most designers. Um, my salons are, are, are successful, good businesses. I have a great team. And one of the things that I want to talk about is, is how to build an amazing team and how to have really successful partnerships with people around you and what integrity means in this business. So one of the things I want to start with is this idea of intention, like why I'm actually here. And the reason I'm talking is so that in some way I can be of service to you guys. I'm hoping something I say in some way helps you. That whenever I do anything like this, I always like to kind of discuss that it's not like, hey, John Raymond's cool, because I don't really care about that. I have enough people saying John's cool. I'm not here to do that. I'm here in some way to influence you in a, in a positive way, hopefully, and help you in whatever it is that your stage of your business is and your craft. So one of the things I want to discuss about is, is what it means to build strong and transparent relationships. So for me as a, as a hairdresser in this industry, you know, it's, it's, I think, a very, in the fashion world and in the beauty world, I think it's a very complicated business. There's a lot of things that happen within it that I think are very confusing. Um, for me, uh, I like to align myself with nice people that are authentic and are honest. Now, in this business, there's a lot of people that are not those things. There are a lot of people that act kind of crazy. And it's one of those things that I found that some people I work with, I'm like, oh my god, in any other world, nobody would pay attention to you. But you have success in a certain way, and you're allowed to conduct yourself that way. And those people have success around that. And for me, I try to stay away from people like that. I like to align myself with nice, kind, clear people. And the nice thing about this industry and this, this world that we're involved in is we get to choose relationships. We get to choose who we participate with. Now, with that, I have made good choices and I have made bad choices. And I have positioned myself with people who I thought were nice and ended up not being nice. And I found that people that I thought were sometimes mean became nice. So all of these things fluctuate and move around. But the thing that I think is really important is really establishing boundaries and understanding that we're in a world of exchange. And that, that sometimes can be really complicated, what it means to be in a world of exchange. And what I mean by that is, so I'm, I'm a hairdresser. I cut hair behind the chair. I charge a fee, you pay me $450, I give you a haircut. I'm in the world of exchange. I give you something, you give me something. But you know, we also are in this world of exchange where bloggers come in or editors come in. And the exchange is, is I do your hair for free and you then give us press. So we're still in the world of exchange. And if that exchange doesn't feel equal, if it doesn't feel like it's transparent and clear, then I no longer engage with that exchange. And so what happened was at first, when I began in this industry, I was really like anxious, like, oh my God, I need to be noticed, I need to be important, I need to stand out, I need people to pay attention to me, I need to be successful. And I, I really kind of pushed. And in that pushing, I was unskillful. And in that unskillfulness, I, I said some things I shouldn't have said, I did some things I shouldn't have done, and I made enemies with people that I didn't mean to make enemies with because I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. And so the hope is, is as you guys are emerging through whatever stage of your business is, there's a, a sense of awareness that I think we need to bring into what we do and that we understand that there are times that we don't know who the people are that we're dealing with and we want to be usually kind and usually considerate. And we're in an industry where sometimes that actually doesn't really matter. I've seen very, very successful people be incredibly mean to the people around them. And it makes me sad. It really bums me out. And again, I choose not to participate most of the time with people like that. But I've also worked with incredibly powerful, very amazing people that are kind, are considerate, and pay attention to those people around me. And that is something that is, to me, valuable. So I'll tell you, I think in this industry, in the fashion world, in the beauty world, there's no real quick fix. There's no quick path. I mean, there's a couple things. You get a reality show, maybe it gets you something, right? But the reality is, most of the time, when we work, we have to work with direction, 
We have to work with intention. We have to work with awareness. And to me, it's like I have to move mountains and I have to have that really laser sharp intention that it's not fluffy. It's not kind of like, oh, I don't know. It's very clear. So it's interesting. We, we opened up our, our West, uh, West Third location about a year ago. And in this, when I came to LA, I'm a New Yorker. Just so you guys know, I, I work back and forth between New York and LA. And I, I, I feel very New York. And what I mean by that is I'm very direct. I don't, and not that West Coast is not direct, but sometimes it's a little fluffy, right? And again, it's not a bad thing, you know, but it's just, it's not my thing. My thing is, is, is excuse me, get out of my way. Hey man, get out of my way. Like it's kind of that thing. Instead of, ah, I don't know, please. I'm not, I'm not a very polite person. I don't actually even think I'm really a nice person. I am, however, a clear person. And to me, that's my kindness. Does that make sense? My version of nice is I speak directly and I speak with clarity. And sometimes it's gentle, like, hey, how are you? And sometimes it's like, yo, pay attention. You're about to get run over. Get out of the street, right? So with that, when we opened up our West Third location, I was nervous, because I'm not, I'm not the type of person that likes to, what I'll call, peacock. And when you have to show my feathers, I'm special, because I do these people, and I know these celebrities, and I've done these designers. And, and there's a, a sense in LA that that's what gives us relevance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and again, I say this with gentleness, but with my experience, and hopefully if it offends you, maybe there's some truth to it. And if it doesn't, that's cool. In New York, if things suck, people don't go to them. It's that clear. You can be a hole-in-the-wall little place, but if it's amazing, people are going to line up. In LA, some things suck, and people line up to go because it's supposed to be good. So one of the things we found with a lot of editors that came and saw us is that they were very unhappy with their services in LA. They didn't like their hair color or their haircuts. They weren't pleased with how they were treated. And I would say, well, why do you go to these hairdressers? And across the board, they would say, well, they're supposed to be good. And I'd say, but they're not. And they'd say, well, they're supposed to be. And I'd say, what's more important, the idea or the reality? And I really want to embrace reality. And what I mean by that is the perspective that what's important is what is, not the idea of what is. So just, just because I know somebody doesn't give me relevance. Just because I'm a New Yorker doesn't make me a good hairdresser. Just because I've done some celebrity's hair doesn't make me good. What makes me good is how I treat you as the individual that you are. And so what we did, which was very successful and surprising, in LA, we didn't do that thing of, I do these celebrities. We actually did the thing, I'm gonna give you the best haircut of your life. We're gonna give you the best color of your life. We're gonna treat you like a human being. We're not gonna talk about ourselves and how important we are. Instead, we're gonna serve you because that's our job. And as a result of doing our job, they came back, people came back. And in the short year that we've been open, we have been recognized by most major publications as one of the top 10 salons in Los Angeles. And the interesting thing was, I thought LA was gonna be more difficult. I really I thought that I was gonna have to fight more and I was gonna have to kind of show more. And the reality is, all we did was serve the people around us. And through that service, we got great reward. So I want you guys to think about what that means. I want you to think about what it means to serve whatever your customer is, and that money, while important, is not the end goal of anything. And when I say that, I really, I, I know people that are billionaires who are miserable human beings. So I know that money doesn't make happiness. And I know people that don't have a lot of money that are full of joy. They have so much happiness inside. So I know the money thing isn't necessarily the goal. However, what I do believe is the goal is three things. Purpose, mastery, and self-direction. So before I even mention any of these things, if you guys, when you're all done, you can write this down if you'd like. On YouTube, there's a video from Dan Pink. It's called RSA Motivation. And it's, a, it's like a Freakonomics TED Talk. And it's animated, so it's kind of interesting to watch. So you're not just watching some guy like me talk. There's actually like a whole cartoon thing going along with what he's saying. But it's going to speak to exactly what I'm going to say. But what he said in that talk epitomizes and embodies the things that we, as my team, embody. Purpose, mastery, and self-direction. So let's talk about purpose for a moment. For me, money comes, 
but not as a result of looking for it. For me, is all, the money is always secondary. You do excellent work, money flows. And I've watched people in my industry, in this industry, in the fashion world, try to pick the short path, the easy path, the simple path. And usually, they crash and burn. We have to work hard. So let's talk about mastery for a moment. Mastery, they've done studies about how to become masterful. How does one become excellent at what they do? It takes about 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours is about eight to 10 years of diligent practice. But let's think about diligent practice. I can dribble a basketball really badly for 10 years and I'm just really good at doing something really bad, right? So what that means is it's not just about repetition. It's about intelligent repetition. It's about doing things well over and over again. And that there is, again, no short path. Now there's the Michael Jordans of the world that they wake up and they can just play basketball. There's the Amadeuses of the world, the Mozarts, that they wake up and they can play the piano. I was never one of those. I didn't grow up braiding my Barbie's hair. Because mastery, when we learn from people, there's different types of teachers. There's those, for me, as in the hair world. And I, you know, again, I know you guys are bloggers, and maybe some of you are, uh, you know, I don't fashion designers. I, I'm not exactly sure what everybody does here, and that's okay. But in the hair world, there's this sense of scarcity that what I do, you can't know. Because if you know what I know, you're going to steal what I have, and then I'm not going to have it. And that was something that really confused me in this industry, that you can't have this thing. And to me, I kind of liken it to Eddie Van Halen. With, I, I know it's a weird reference, right? Ed Van Halen, weird. But Eddie Van Halen, the guy that did the guitar, nah, 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 he did this thing, right? And what he would do is when they first started, he would turn his back to the audience because he didn't want anybody to steal his special guitar techniques. And then once he became famous, and, then, nah, nah, and now everybody gets to do it, but he was the inventor of it. So there's that sense of, if you know what I know, you won't, you'll take what I have, and then I won't have it. I live in a world of abundance. And what I mean by a world of abundance, I live in a world that there's plenty to go around. There's so much that we can share when we work and grow together instead of in an isolated way. So the way I've created success for myself has been about how can I share, how can I serve, and by that service, I get reward. Now sometimes that reward is money and sometimes that reward is other things, but nonetheless, there is always abundance around me. And here's the interesting thing. When we opened up West 3rd in, in a, a year ago, we gave away free services. That's all we did because we opened up in a city where no one knew any of us. We literally came in and said, look, we're going to open a salon and we're in the middle of I don't know where and I don't know what's going to happen, but we're just going to give it away. And I know that when people experience us, they're going to come back because we are unlike anybody else. So again, it's about how do we do what other people are doing better or how do we do what other people are doing differently? And sometimes it's how do we do it better and different, right? And that's what establishes our brand. So for us at Spoken Wheel, it was all about how are we better and how are we different? And the way we're better and the way we're different is we're clear that we're there to serve you, we're there to give you the service, to teach you, to educate you. And I'll tell you an interesting story. I have a, 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 an editor that comes in and she's super sweet and she's been around for a long time and she's seen everybody. She's seen Frederick Fakai and Sahag. I mean, she's seen everybody. And she sat in my chair and I said, I'm gonna blow dry your hair. And she said, great. And I said, but before I do, who does your hair normally? She says, well, I do it. I don't like to take advantage. I can go to, you know, whatever, but I don't feel good about it. So she does her own hair. And I said, well, listen, has anybody ever showed you how to do your hair? And she said, no. And I gave her a brush and I let her blow dry her hair and I helped her, I guided her, I empowered her. And she said to me, which was shocking, no one in her life has ever served her in that way. Most of the time we try to talk about how special we are. And for me, what I know is special about us is our ability to serve. So what does that mean for you guys? How do you establish your excellence? Understand what your purpose is. What are you here for? Why are you doing it? Because if you're doing it for money, guys, promise it's not going to be happiness. Money does not equal happy. What for us equals happy is we have a purpose. So I opened up salons for a reason. I didn't open them up to make money. money I, I make money in many other ways. Salons margins are really low. They are a lot of work with very little reward. I opened up the salons because I wanted to change the way the salon business is run. And I got sick and tired of telling people how to do it. So I said, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm just going to do it. And so that's my purpose. And every member of my team that's engaged and involved with us understands that purpose and wakes up every day and goes to work with that understanding. We are here to serve. 
we are here to change, and we are here to be our best. The other thing, and this is at least on the salon business, we are engaged in our work with a, a sense of mastery. Like we get to practice our haircuts and practice our color and we get better and better and better. So our space, the things that we're engaged with is about education. It's about how do I as an owner, how do I as a, a member of a salon, train and educate and better the people around me. So the way that I look at my business is I, I have a couple of different businesses, right? So I, as an editorial hairdresser, I have that business and my job is to serve the, the photographer and serve the designer. With my salons, my job is to serve my staff. My job is not to serve the customer. Their job is to serve the customer. My customer in my business is my staff. So that means I need to give them my heart and soul. I need to help them move mountains so that they can then move mountains. And what happens is, something happens with engagement. And that engagement is as people will do what we need them to do as long as they feel enrolled. So they are enrolled in purpose, they are enrolled in mastery. And then we're gonna talk about this thing called self-direction. Self-direction is a really interesting thing. The Four Seasons Hotel, no matter who you are in that organization, you can discount that product to anybody, that they are empowered to make decisions to help the customer get what they want. Our salons are entirely self-directive, so we don't pay a manager to run a salon. Most salons you go into, they have managers. They have somebody that you're paying 60 to 100 something thousand dollars a year to manage the business. Our salons, the team manages themselves. We empower them, we give them the skill set, we give them the support, and they make the decisions. If they want to discount a service, they can do it. If they want to charge what they want to charge, they can do it, and it's a conversation, and it's clearly communicated. So purpose, mastery, self-direction, absolutely paramount. And so with you and your business, whatever it is, I want you to think about what it means. That what is your purpose? What is it that you're mastering? If you're designing clothing, mastery, it takes time, it takes work, it takes intelligent repetition. Surround yourself with excellence. That's another thing that for me, when I started, and I was talking about the, the Eddie Van Halen thing, when I realized I didn't know what I needed to know, I sought out people who were interested in helping me be better. And they weren't like, I am gonna not tell you this thing because if you know it, it was more like, I wanna serve you. So find people that can serve you. Find people that want you to be your best. And if they don't want you to be your best, stay away from them. They're dangerous. I don't want anything to do with people that wish me harm. You wanna hurt me, I'm gonna go away, right? If you wanna love me, we're good. We're gonna have a great time. I wanna be supported and I wanna support. And again, it's an exchange. I give you something, you give me something. You know, I used to live in this world of unconditional love. I'm here to unconditional, I thought I was a saint, I was nuts, I mean, I needed medication. I was totally, misinformed about the nature of the world that I lived in. And I lived in this kind of idea instead of reality. And what happens is I had to learn how to draw boundaries. And what I mean by boundaries is I will give you love when you give it back and it's an exchange and it's really lovely, but if you start hurting me, I'm gonna go away. Or I'm gonna tell you you're hurting me and then you can either not hurt me anymore or I'm gonna go away. So it is an exchange, it's not, I'm gonna give you and give you and give you till I have nothing left and then my cup is empty, my battery's done, I've got nothing to offer and then you're all good to go and you've discarded me. So this is an industry, the fashion world, the beauty world, where some people just take and they take and they take and they take until they can get somebody else to give them and give them. And that's part of the world, that happens everywhere. But again, for me, in, in the world that I've lived in, I found that in the, the fashion world, some people do crazy things. It's like, I've seen Zoolander. Not just the movie, but in real life, it happens. And again, when those worlds come into my world, I go, boy, that's great, I appreciate the money, but you gotta go. I don't need your money more than I need happiness. So I'm gonna tell you a, a story about staff, you know, staff members. They have to conduct themselves in a certain way, and if they don't, then they are not a part of our team anymore. And we have people that make us lots of money. They do really well, but I will never sacrifice culture for money. And what I mean by that is, is as much money as you bring me, if you are a, and I'm gonna use a strong word, a virus, if you're a parasite, if you are unkind, uncool, unaware, then you, as successful as you are, can go be successful somewhere else, not in my house. So my salons are my house. And my house is very particular. And let's talk about my actual house. In my house, you can't wear your shoes. No shoes in my house. So if you come to my house and you have shoes on, I'm gonna say, excuse me, take your shoes off. And if you go, no, I'm gonna go, okay, well you can't come to my house. 
Does that make sense? Again, drawing boundaries, making sure that the people around us understand what our expectations are, and then making sure that we then provide that communication so we set them up for success, and then we then have a successful experience. So, Pat, mastery, self-direction, purpose, we're talking about communication, we're talking about clarity, and we're talking about taking time and the effort and, and, and then this idea of abundance. So I've said a lot of things in a lot of different ways. Um, what I'd like to do, I don't even know what time, where am I at with time? All right, when did I start this thing? I got 10 minutes, so here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna open up for some questions if anybody has anything they wanna know about anything I've said. Yes, sir. I'm from Philly, and I definitely understand what you mean about the directness, and I definitely understand what you portrayed with the fluff that you said. When you were establishing a brand in the beginning, on the East Coast as opposed to the West Coast, what are some things that you experienced that made you want to not establish brands? That I didn't want to establish my brand in a. Like, was it not easier to find that establishing a brand? Right. I understand. So what he asked was, in different cities, he's from Philadelphia, he's an East Coaster, uh, and so he was wondering about establishing brands, speaking to a different market in different ways. So we have a narrative, and actually I have this operations manager, she's a genius, she's super smart, and again, surround yourself with excellence, surround yourself with people that know what they're doing. We have a great PR girl, I don't know how to do PR, we hired a PR girl, and I say do your thing. I don't need to get in your way. I will do anything you say. You're the expert. I don't need to be the expert. I'm not a colorist. I don't do color. So that means when, if, when a client starts talking to me, what should I do with my color? I go, Psst, I don't know. Speak to my colorist. And my colorist does the job that she does. So I like to get people who are excellent, provide them with the information they need, and then let them do their job. I don't know how to build a website, I paid somebody to build a website. I don't know how to do social media, I paid somebody to do social media, right? So, as far as our narrative, so let's talk about our brand. Our brand is consistent, right? And that's our brand. Not every brand is consistent, sometimes we have to speak to different people in different ways. If I'm speaking to a five-year-old, it might be different than if I'm speaking to a 12-year-old, right? I know that's a childy thing, but right? We have to change or adjust who we're speaking to. And, and I do that on a regular, even with guests. Sometimes I'm like, hey, hon, how are you? And sometimes I'm like, yo, girl, pay attention, because this is a mess. It depends on who I'm dealing with, and it depends on the situation I'm dealing with. So with that in mind, our brand. Our brand is clear. We have a clear narrative. And what our narrative is, is that we are here to be of service and do excellent work. The celebrity, the fashion is secondary. It's nice, it helps, but it's not actually our goal. My goal isn't to get Gwyneth Paltrow in my salon. Right? My goal is to get everyone in the world into my salon, give them the best haircut, the best color of their life, and then if Gwyneth Paltrow shows up, cool. And if not, we're good. I don't need her to make me relevant. What makes me relevant is each and every one of your experiences in my business. How was that? Good. All right. Other questions? Oh. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question is, you can have an employee who's not nice. I'm going to say not nice. I'm in New Yorker, but I'm not going to curse in front of you kids. Uh, not nice. And you, you're, you're limited in resources. So maybe you can't fire that person, right? However, they're not nice or easy to work with. So what do you do, right? So I want you to think about resources, options. You can do anything, guys. The world is yours. Now, of course, obviously, there's money situations and there's option on, you know, where do you find these people and how do you do this? So, uh, I'll give you an example. I, I have an employee and uh, amazing, really special, difficult to work with sometimes. And so what happens is we have to negotiate, but let's think about actually any relationship. Partners, husbands, girlfriends. So, but you know, there's different threats. Listen, there's people that we are engaged in relationships with, friends, mothers, family, whatever it may be, that we have to figure out what's the cost to the, you know, and benefit relationship. What's the exchange? So, and how much, what's our threshold? Again, you can't walk into my house with shoes, right? That's my rules, right? So what that means is if you walk in my house, I don't care if you're gonna give me a, well, a million dollars maybe, 
but get out. I don't want you there. So you guys have to figure out, for me, I don't like mean people. I don't want to be around them. And I have let people go that were lucrative members of our team. They brought money in, but they also offered a, a, a parasitic culture. And I don't need the money more than I need happiness. Happiness is paramount. So to answer your question, what do you do? Find solutions. Now what is the solution? Maybe you need to coach this person. Maybe you need to sit down with them. For me, I'll give you an example. We have, so we, uh, we're doing this educational event at my salon. We have four days, we're doing a cutting class. It's, we have people coming in from all around the country to come train and do this thing with us. And we have an employee who's in San Francisco who decided, you know, I don't want to go. I'd rather take four days off. That's what she did. And, and she wasn't clear with her communication. So we got on a phone with her. And we said, listen, I'm confused by your communication. You told us when you engaged with us as a business that you were interested in bettering yourself, becoming more educated. But your actions are telling me something different. I'm confused. Help me understand. And she said, well, I want to take four days off. And I said, but by taking those four days off, you're not engaging in our education. And if you don't engage in our education, you're not really a part of our team. Now, I'm not going to fire you, but I want you to understand that this is an important aspect of what we're doing. So I communicate. I didn't just kind of go, oh my god, how do I talk to this person? I told her what we needed. And then she then makes an educated decision about what she was. I had another conversation a couple weeks ago with a colorist. She was a little cuckoo. And she was kind of acting a little crazy. And I said, listen, I need you to show up. I need you to work your butt off. I need you to do your job. And I said, can you do that? And she said, I don't know. And the next day she quit. Great. Does that make sense? You can't show up for your work don't show up. Go away. Do your job well. Hustle your butt. Know what you're doing. Be aware or don't be around me. And now it's strong, but it's clear. So I would rather have a happy, healthy culture than make a hundred million dollars. I know that sounds cuckoo, but I'm telling you the money for me always flows. Money's not a problem. Happiness is our biggest challenge. Think about what makes you happy, what what really fills your cup, what makes you full of joy, and, and charge that, make that happen, move mountains to be happy. And if this person doesn't make me happy and I can't learn from this situation, you gotta go away. I've got no time for that. I can try to help coach you, but you know, so let's talk about how we hire staff, the people that work for us. All we ask is two things from the people that work for us. I don't need them to be good. I can teach any hairdresser how to cut hair, not hard. It's not rocket science. It's just a stupid thing, cutting, and it's easy. What I need is nice, and I need is relaxed. Are you nice and are you cool? Can you, can you be nice to the people around you, and can you just chill out a little bit and not be crazy? So that's, that's really all we're looking for. I'll teach you how to be a good haircut. I can't, however, teach you how to be nice. You're not nice, go away. How's that for an answer? Good. What else? Is that it? Are we done? Oh, wait, we got one more. I'll take it. Because you just mentioned that you want everybody to go to your salon. Hmm. You charge all these different haircuts. And then there's other things like recession. Hmm. How do you balance on that? Okay. So the question is, is I want everybody to come to my salon, but not everybody can afford my salon, right? So um, what's my answer? Right? Well, I'm 450, but not everybody's 450. But let's talk about the difference between value plus and cost plus. What if they choose to spend their money on that? So let's talk about that. Cost plus plus value plus. Right. Cost plus is, and not a bad thing, is an H&M. An H&M is a cost plus business. It's not an expensive brand. If you buy a dress there and it lasts you six weeks, you got your money's worth. Right. Value plus, you can get that same dress at Prada. That's the reality. Right? However, if that dress lasts you six weeks, you're going to be mad because you didn't get your money's worth and you're also paying for that value. So you, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, fashion designers, you can't patent a dress. Right? So what that means is, and, and the fashion industry was really nervous about this because they wanted to copyright these things. They were like, oh my god, you, you know, Louis Vuitton, the person on Chinatown is buying my Louis Vuitton purses and Louis Vuitton is going to go out of business. And what they realize is it's a different customer. The person that goes on the, which is not a bad thing, but the person that goes to Chinatown, buys the fake Louis Vuitton, 
is not the person that goes to Louis Vuitton and pays for a real Louis Vuitton. And the person that goes to a real Louis Vuitton isn't going to go to Chinatown to get a fake one. They're a different customer. Cost plus, value plus. We are a value plus business. We sell Aveda shampoo. Aveda shampoo is $15 a bottle. But the value is not there because our stuff is organic and it's natural and it's for somebody who wants to spend money. Here's the thing, guys. I love spending money. I really do. But I love certain things in certain ways. I like good food. Right? When I work, I don't need to stay in a hotel. When I travel for holidays, I'm staying in a five-star hotel. Does that make sense? I don't own a car. So that's not my value. I'm not going to go buy a Range Rover, not my thing. I know people that would rather have a Range Rover than a nice house. Does that make sense? So that's the value they place on things. That's fine. So our customer is anybody who is interested and willing and puts value on the service we provide. Cost Cutters is great. It's not our customer. It's not our business. You can go and get a haircut from Cost Cutters, and maybe it's what you want, and maybe it's not, but it's not your value. I can't place the value on you, you place your value. So what that means is, is when we, so let's talk about sales for a moment. Let's talk about how we sell. We believe that sales come through education. And what I mean by that is when a guest sits in my chair, I don't say you must buy this. I say, listen, this product is this thing and this thing and this thing. It benefits you in this way and this way and this way. And do you want it? And if they make a mature adult decision to do what they want to do. So Range Rover doesn't go, oh man, you can't afford this thing. They go, whatever, you know, your credit's approved. You got a credit card or whatever it is. I'm going to take your money. So what that means is, is you might not be able to feed your family, but you might want a nice haircut. Does that make sense? Now, I hope, I hope you're making reasonable, healthy decisions. And at the same time, also our price point is not only, I mean, I'm 450, but, you know, we have a girl 100, we have a girl 60, we have new talent. We, we make it so it's accessible, but reasonably accessible. And again, we don't, so let's talk about how I got to 450 real quick. I know, time. I've never, I'm done, I gotta go. I have never been afraid of charging people money. And what that means is again, the money comes as a result of excellence. So what that means for me is I'm not like, oh my God, I'm charging you $100. I'm so scared to raise it. It's more like this. For me, that $450 haircut is a discount. They're lucky they're only paying $450. They should be paying $1,000. They're getting it at a discount. So what that means to me is I put that value on the service I create because my service, as far as I'm concerned, is the best haircut that that person can ever get. Now that doesn't mean it's the only one and they might not feel that way. Look, what's the difference between a Van Gogh and a Picasso and a Rembrandt? People have different feelings about different things. Does that make sense? But for me, I've always been very clear that I give you this clear service and you're going to give me money and we're good. And you're happy to give it to me. I'm happy to take it. I want to serve you. You serve me. Exchange. Clear and easy. Never apologize for the money you charge. Never. Never. Then don't do it. I'm so sorry. Give me your money. No, the people who I think, at least what I think in, in business, is the people who try to get you to cut your rates and you do are the biggest pains in the rear you're ever going to work. Okay, so this woman is saying that the people who cut their rates or ask you for discounts. Are, are people that are difficult to work with. They're not going to appreciate or not value. So let's be clear. I give away the services and then I charge you. Does that make sense? I'll give you a free service. It's a discount. It's free. But next time you come in, you're going to pay or you can go somewhere else. It's cool. I love you. I want you to be happy and well. If you want to come to us, you have to pay. And if you don't, we're good to go. I wish you well and go find somebody else to no, give you a free haircut. But I don't negotiate or argue about my price. And you know, but again, guys, when we started, when we opened up here, we gave it away for free. So come on in. Come in for a color. Come in for a cut. We just want you to know who we are. And we know that a large portion of you guys are going to come back. And then there's the people who don't really care. And then they'll go somewhere else. And that's cool. I love you, but go away. Other questions? Or am I out of town? I'm done. No? More? No? No? Yeah, weird picture of me back there. <laughs> Double chin and everything. Yes. Is there another question? Why can't I wear shoes in my house? Or why don't people wear shoes in my house? Um, I, I, I like, you know, it's like a thing. I, I like, like, it's like a, uh, an Asian, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in Japan. I like the shoes off, the, you know, do yoga. I just don't like the shoes, dirty shoes. Sorry? Say that again, sorry? Okay, so you guys are talking about Sarah Jessica Parker going to a party and somebody stealing her shoes. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Put it in a bag. 
Would I pay for the, I'm just talking about my house, right? I'm not saying my salon, keep your shoes on, you're responsible for the things that are on your feet, right? But at my house, you're a guest in my house, and if somebody stole their shoes, I don't know. What would I do? I'd say, I don't, I don't know what I would say because it's never happened. So in my life, nobody's stolen somebody else's shoes. And here's the thing, if they needed it more than the good, take it, it's all good. So here, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll just relate that. I live in New York City half the time, half the time in LA. I, I ride a motorcycle around New York City. I used to park my motorcycle out front of my apartment building, and I would wake up sometimes and it would be gone. Somebody stole it. Now, I was complicit in that. And what that means is I made a choice to own a motorcycle that could potentially get stolen. And then I parked it in a city that could potentially steal things. So I made a choice to put myself at risk. And so when I came outside, I was like, OK, I rolled the dice. And anyway, thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Good. Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. And so glad that you're here. You could just take a moment and subscribe to our channel. You can do it by clicking here, over here, over here, or wherever that subscribe button is, just click it. You'll get everything directly sent to you. First to know of all things Simply Stylist. Thank you so much, and if you don't, this dog is coming after you.